or an NBV part. So, I am talking about additionally, apart from that uh, question which I have done in the class, then I asked you to do one homework as well. But in the recordings, and as promised, I have shared it. I hope there is no doubts with that question. So, for an NBV chair, all of you. So, in investment appraisal, we know that one of the question it can be a foreign NBV question. Adinda almost all adjustments in covering in the two areas are. People, our chair, that all question, Shumla, Nana question. So, apart from that, any number for NBV Allah, advanced investment appraisal, where in the area, we know that advanced investment appraisal questions are the discussing in the area, that is application of black shoulder model. So, it's already there as a continuation of the question which you have done in the last class. So if you remember when we have ended up with the calculation of Chumra company, there we have seen that the actual NPV of the question is coming to be a negative figure, right? But a negative NPV, okay? So since it's a negative NPV, we feel it's like it's not feasible to complete the project. But on the other hand, Bullen company is giving us an offer to sell the company or the entire project at the start of the year. So there is an option to sell. So that's where we have to use the application of our BSOP model. Okay. So literally if sell an option I under some load and then the option the value under we need to calculate the value of put option. So put option a value number calculate it. So whenever we calculate put option or call option, we need we know that we need certain variables namak edaka variables aanu vendathu what all variables what all variables are required for the calculation of a put option hmm? do you remember namak endaka variables aanu vendathu for calculating put option p e p a we need p a p e then Oh, the volatility, then the time to expiry, as well as risk free rate. Right? So, in this scenario, since it's a sell put option, what will you consider as your PA and what amount will you consider as your PE? PEA at the number of the end of the year, PEA at the end of the Put option in case, number of PEA and then other one of the PEA and then. So just note it down. So now, since it's a put option, number of PEA at the end of the year, number of a sale sale proceeds are okay. So in case of put option, number of a country in the amount and the regime, the amount that you can so we need PA, PE, then risk free rate, volatility S, yes, and T, the time to expire. It ran variables on the end. And now we know that since we have a BSOP calculator with us, now the BSOP calculator available on now in ACC exams. So our BSOP calculator, so you see them again, the, um, we can calculate the value of the call option as well as put option. So earlier, we the manually chain of it, but nowadays we just need to enter that variables, our variables and raise the annual exam platform with a BSOP calculator available on. All right. So have you tried using that BSOP calculator? Hmm. That is PE and put option scenario and then already PA item PE What will you consider as PE here? Uh, it is a sale proceeds. A sale proceeds PE PE Since it's a Put option because option to sell either under the sale proceeds of an PEA to the cash. And what about PA? 
ോസ്ോണ്ട് <laughs> The present value of cash flows foregone in year three, four, and five. Other I can only add a second PA item. So is it clear, everyone? So a put option scenario, we need to know what is PA and PE. So since in this scenario, so since it's a put option, we can consider the PA as the cash flows which is foregone the present value of cash flows which is foregone in the remaining period so if you are planning to sell the project in second year we will forego we have to forego the cash flows in year 3 4 and 5 so year 3 4 and 5 aa varshangalil endano nimku idunna net cash flow so this net cash flows whatever you are getting adinde present value eduka so that present value will be used as pa is it clear everyone So can you check it out? How much is the present value? Can you calculate how much is the present value of the cash flow foregone? I throw it in okay, approximately. How much it is? Can you calculate it, guys? So we need the present value of these three cash flows: year three, year four, and year five. So will you calculate it? We need the discounting factor. So I think our discounting rate was twelve percentage. Okay. So how will you calculate it? So this amount divided by one plus. Twelve percent is raised to three. So in the same way, second year it should be raised to four, and third year it should be raised to five. So these are the three cash flows. So if we sum it up, if we sum of this cash flows, sum of this cash flows. So this is your equity amount or number one. Present value of cash flows which is foregone. So since it's a put option, we will consider this as your PE. That's the present value of your underlying asset. So approximately how much it will come? Is thirty million six one six nine zero one point zero nine something like that. So it's a rounding of figure. So examiner will only consider whether you have calculated the correct. Items. So, but you know, using the line items are correct. I don't know. Because they won't be much concerned about the figures. So, PA. No, I mean, no, no. That's the value of that option. Up a value of that underlying asset. So, how much it is? It's the present value of cash flow foregone in year three, four, and five. So, now what is PE? I said that it's a sales proceeds. At that time, our sales proceeds. Do you remember our sales proceeds? Twenty million. The sale proceeds was how much? It is twenty-eight million. So that will be received at the start of year three. So that will be considered as your sale proceeds. Then, what about R? The risk free rate. How much is R? The free rate at that time. So since it is not given directly, we can make an assumption that here the short dated treasury bills are traded at four percentage. So we know that treasury bills are something which is issued from the government side. So we will feel like that's a replica of your the free rate. So since government treasury bills are considered to be a safest investment, E four percent. Now we can try to consider it. We can consider it as a risk-free investment. So this is how you will apply your professional marks. So, like, now we can do our professional marks to score. Yeah, but then, again, 
because how here we have made an assumption so this assumptions that you are making adakke ana commercial equipment adey pole na nammude skepticism sinathile varunnu so out of the box if you are we are if you are making certain assumptions or criticizing certain assumption made by the managers avadakke ana namukku aa professional marks score cheyan vettunna in the name of skepticism or commercial equipment അപ്പോ ഈ ഫോർ പെർസെന്റേജ് ഡയറക്ട്ലി അവർ തന്നിട്ടില്ല സോ വി ആർ മേക്കിംഗ് എൻ അസംഷൻ ബിക്കോസ് ഇത് ട്രഷറി ബില്ല് ആണ് അപ്പൊ എത്ര ആയിരിക്കും നമ്മുടെ റിസ്ക് ഫ്രീ റേറ്റ് വരുന്നേ ഹോമച്ച് ഇസ് യുവർ റിസ്ക് ഫ്രീ റേറ്റ് ആർ ഇസ് കൺസിഡർഡ് യുവർ റിസ്ക് ഫ്രീ റേറ്റ് ഹോ മച്ച് ഇറ്റ് ഈസ് ഫോർ പെർസെന്റേജ് സോ വി കൺസിഡർഡ് ഇറ്റ് ആ സെയിം ആസ് യുവർ ട്രഷറി ബിൽ ദൻ ദ വോളറ്റാലിറ്റി വാട്ട് അബൌട്ട് ദ വോളറ്റാലിറ്റി പാർട്ട് വോളറ്റാലിറ്റി റേറ്റ് എത്ര ആണ് How much is the volatility rate? 35. So again, that is directly given. The standard deviation rate is 30 per, 35%. And finally, T. T is the time to expire or in a way you can say that we have the option to exceed the time. We have the option to exceed the time. We have the option to exceed the time. So we know that we are doing that exercise. We have to exercise that option at the start of year three. The start of year three, no, I mean, what other version? How many years left to exercise that option? Start of year three means how many years left to exercise that option? Two years. So we only need these five figures to calculate the value of call option and put option using VSOP calculator. okay so we'll just try it out so that then you know that one one parna da da password on the way so this is available in your exam so there is something on the bsop calculator is available here so in that bsop calculator we can just we just need to enter that values so automatically the value enter in the answer you will get the figures പുട്ട് ഓപ്ഷനെയും കോൾ ഓപ്ഷനെയും വാല്യൂ അവിടെ കിട്ടുന്നതായിരിക്കും ഓക്കെ സോ നമ്മളിപ്പോ കറക്റ്റ് ആയിട്ട് എമൗണ്ട്സ് ഇവിടെ എൻട്രി ചെയ്ത് കൊടുത്താൽ മതി ഫോർ എക്സാമ്പിൾ സോ അവിടെ പി എ എത്ര ആയിരുന്നു ഹോ മച്ച് വാസ് ഓർ പി എ ഹിയർ തേർട്ടി എത്ര ആയിരുന്നു നമുക്ക് കിട്ടിയത് Thirty six one six nine zero one. All right. So it is thirty six one six nine zero one. And PE was twenty eight million. and how much was r it was 4 percentage time to expiry to then ana so it's, here it is 35 percentage so when you apply this automatically you will get the values down here so ninga ningada value of put option and call option automatically you can get it here so this is the value of your put option how much it is 344 point So just note it down. So our value of put option after only taking that using that BSOP calculator, it is three four four six one three four point three three two. So the value of put option is three four four six one. Right now, three four point three two. so this is the value of that offer so now we near asked to calculate the total value of the project so our real option also to consider him but what will be the value of the project the value of the project needs to get netted off so it is 
ഈ ഒരു പുട്ട് ഓപ്ഷന്റെ വാല്യൂൽ നിന്ന് നമ്മൾ എന്തുകൂടെ നെറ്റ് ഓഫ് ചെയ്യണം എൻ ബി കൂടെ നെറ്റ് ഓഫ് ചെയ്യുക സോ ദാറ്റ് വിൽ ബി ദ നെറ്റ് വാല്യൂ ഓഫ് യുവർ ഇറ്റ് ക്ലിയർ എവൺ സോ ഹൗ ടു അപ്ലൈ ദാറ്റ് ബി എസ് ഒ പി കൺസെപ്റ്റ് സോ റാർ ദാൻ ജസ്റ്റ് ഇഗ്നോറിംഗ് ദ പ്രൊജക്ട് സിൻസ് ഇറ്റ് ഈസ് നെഗറ്റീവ് വി ഹാവ് ടു കൺസേർ സം അതർ ഓപ്ഷൻസ് ആസ് വെൽ സോ നെറ്റ് വാല്യൂ ഓഫ് പ്രൊജക്ട് വിത്ത് പുട്ട് ഓപ്ഷൻ എന്ന് പറഞ്ഞാൽ എന്തായിരിക്കും ഇറ്റ് ഈസ് ആ ത്രീ ഫോർ ഫോർ ആ വാല്യൂ നെറ്റ് ഓഫ് എൻ ബി വി ചെയ്യുക സോ ദറ്റ് നെറ്റ് എമൗണ്ട് വിൽ ബി യോർ എൻ ബി വി ഓഫ് ദ പ്രൊജക്ട് വിത്ത് പുട്ട് ഓപ്ഷൻ ഇസ് ക്ലിയർ എവരി വൺ റിപ്ലൈ ദ ചാ is it clear so how to apply that vsop model any doubts okay. so we have covered that post as well above if it was a common option nammal endha ait edukum p would have taken it as your cost of investment nammal ipo further delay aako okay anengil that would have considered as p Okay. I think you can practice another question. If Talam is a company or a homework question, I did it. So Talam company is again another example of applying that option. If you have a BSOP model, you can do that option. If you have a homework card, you can just do it as homework to get a better clarity on the same. Okay. So next one we are going to discuss about apart from a normal NPV for NPV okay almost the same format are not there is nothing new to study there so next one we have to focus on APV so in which situation we will use APV in which situation we will use APV actually huh? yes sir APV is actually so we know that normally we will use NPV in which situation normally we will do npv calculation with your current vac compared to existing cost of capital which it on normally npv calculate but there are situations in which when we enter into a new project that project investing in that project will change our business risk so upon that will make a change to our business risk in the same way there are situations in which investing in a project will make some changes to our financial risk as well or our overall capital structure will change okay so when we take up a new project let's say if you are doing a product which is completely different to our business that's a situation when where there is a change in the business risk so even in that scenario we cannot follow the npv calculation using your current vac we have to approach it with a different tactics in the same way if there is a change in the financial risk that is as a result of investing in the project if our existing capital structure is getting changed let's say as a result of investing in a project i have issued a, a certain amount of debt additional debt into my capital in order to invest in that project so in that scenario our financial risk have changed even in that scenario we cannot calculate the npv of the project using this current vac method so now we basically the end scenario sari kum varna change in business risk kum change in financial risk kum so if there is a change in financial risk in that scenario we have to use this apv approach that is adjusted present value approach and if there is a change in business risk in that scenario there is no much change not much change with respect to the capital structure so nammal odu endu cheyanam will calculate the npv but with a new vac with a new vac means that vac should get adjusted for the risk of that new entity is it clear everyone well there are two type of questions so this you can just we'll be doing question number tisa company on the question on the i think that question clearly uh, gives an opportunity to discuss about this scenario that is how will you calculate the npv when there is a change in business risk okay and for apv there are a number of questions but with respect to business risk change i think from the kit you can just practice this question to get a better idea 
So first of all, we'll just revise that method. So what happens if there is a change in business? I have told that if there is a change in business risk in that scenario, we'll be calculating the NPV with a new risk adjusted VAC. So how will you find a new risk adjusted VAC? What's your first step, Siddharth? And then I'm the first step in the... So base case NPV. I oh, know. Plus NPV uh, risk adjusted VAC and what again. How will you calculate risk adjusted VAC? So if you are completely moving into a different industry or if there's a change in business risk, how do we end the end of the risk adjusted VAC and what again? All right. So how will you calculate risk adjusted, risk adjusted VAC? Step number one, we'll try to find the business risk of our new investment. We'll try to find the business risk of our new investment. So how will you calculate it? It is beta A that is denoted by the letter. Beta A will be regarded as business risk. So in the question, they might give you the equity beta of our target industry. So from that equity beta, we have to find the business risk. So what's the formula for that? So there is a formula found by M and M and CIPM. Companyly, they have come up with a formula for it. So the formula says you can find the BA or business risk using this formula that is beta E multiplied by value of equity plus value of debt into one minus T. So it is beta E multiplied by value of equity divided by value of equity plus debt into one minus T. Basically, number one chain is three only. We assume that this equity beta considers both financial risk and business risk. This equity beta on a value in the counter includes financial risk and business risk. Other than the number in the honor to that equity beta, we are multiplying with that proportion of equity. So we are just taking out the portion of that business risk from B. That's what we are actually mean by this equation. Okay, in a concept of honor. But for just the two or three weeks left for the exams, concepts you have to mainly focus on the calculation part. So first step, we have to calculate a business risk using this formula. Okay, now, now once you get that beta A, that is the business risk of a new industry. So in step number one, the beta E, the VE, the VD, every elements that we use to find the business risk so it is supposed to be the values of our proxy company or the target industry that we are planning to invest. Our first step will normally use the value of equity beta in debt in the LM values. The old values should be based on the figures of our target industry or the proxy company in the target industry. Is it clear everyone? Once you get that beta A, the next step is calculating a new beta E that is risk adjusted beta E. So how will you calculate it? You can just rearrange the same equation. So if you are rearranging that equation, it will be beta E is equal to beta A multiplied by value of equity plus debt into one minus T divided by value of equity. You will get this equation rearranged. But what happens in step number two, this beta A, from where you will get this beta A? This beta is already calculated in step number one. That's a business risk of our target industry. So uh, now I am I'm going to inject it to the capital structure of our current company. So in step number two, the value of equity and debt or the capital structure that you are going to use, it should be of our existing company, not of our target industry. Okay, so as a result, if you apply it to that equation, you are going to get a new equity beta. So that equity beta will be used to calculate our cost of equity using the model CAPM. So that's why this overall process is actually a mix of CAPM and M and M theory. So how will you calculate KE using CAPM model R of plus beta E into R of minus R. Of. So that's your step number three. So just be careful about the fact that the KE that you are going to calculate right now, here RF and RM, that is almost common in every industry. But the beta E that you are going to use here should be from your step number two that you have calculated now. Should not be of our existing equity beta. We have calculated a new risk adjusted equity beta and we are using that to calculate a new cost of equity. 
Okay, so once you get the cost of equity and or the question either they will give the KD directly for you or we have to calculate cost of debt. And we assume that even if there is a change in business risks, there won't be much change with our current cost of debt. What's the reason? Why there is no change in the cost of debt even if there is a, that's a new complete investment. We assume that debt is always risk free. So e assumptions are going to answer them. Why we are not making any change to cost of debt? Because we assume that the debt, the risk of debt is completely free. That's why we are not calculating any new value for cost of debt, even if there is a change in the business risk. Is it clear, everyone? So KE and KD, we have got these figures. And using that, we will be calculating a new VAC, which is adjusted for the risk. We will be calculating a new VAC. And using that VAC, we will calculate the NP. And that's how we are going to appraise a project if there is a complete change in the business risk. Is it clear, everyone? So we cannot use our current VAC to appraise each and every project like what we have seen there. Okay, either they should give that risk adjusted VAC for us to do the appraisal, or we have to calculate the risk adjusted VAC. So now the question is where we can actually use the current VAC. In which all situations we can use the current VAC? There should not be any change in the financial risk. There should not be any change in the business risk. Or else the project should be of a size which is very negligible compared to our existing project. About either the value of the price should be very much negligible or the business risk or financial risk should not change. These situations look at the existing vacuum use either NBV calculate. On the other hand, if there is any change in the business risk in that scenario, we cannot calculate NPV with our current cost of capital. We have to calculate a new cost of capital using the method which is explained right now. I hope all of you are aware about it. So is it clear, everyone? Is the situation now no risk adjusted vacuum you see in one slide? Is it clear, guys? Can you reply in the chat? Okay, now there is a situation where apart from the business risk, the overall capital structure will change. So especially if you're seeing a question where they said that they are investing in a new project, so they have taken uh, too much of debt, either through subsidies loan or, or, or else it will be a normal loan. So if the company is issuing some additional debt to invest in the new project, as a part of your investment appraisal question, you cannot appraise such projects using your NPV method. Why? Because there is a change in the capital structure or there is a change in the financial risk. In that scenario, to have a better picture about the uh, impact of the capital structure on your NPV calculation, we are actually coming up with a different method that is known as adjusted present value method or APV method. So APV is used when there's a change in the financial risk. Especially if you're coming across a question where they have said that, okay, the company is using some subsidized loan for the investment in the financing component part, or especially when they're discussing about the finance of that finance sources of the project. If they are talking about subsidized loan, it's a clue that we have to perform the calculation using APV. So either it will be given directly in the instruction that we have to calculate APV of the project, or if you are just given the instruction to consider the financial acceptability of the project. And if it is subsidized loan, they are talking about the subsidized loan and all these stuffs in your financial, financial information, financing company information, you can confirm that it's a APV question. Okay. Other clue I didn't answer here. So what are the steps of calculating APV? So APV include three steps. First step, we are calculating the NPV itself, but not with the cost of capital. Here we'll use KE and geared. So we are considering the impact of cost of equity separately. So that's why you are calculating KE and geared. Okay. So we are calculating the NPV of the project, but the discount rate should be how? Should not be cost of capital. It should be KE and geared. That is cost of equity of an ungeared company. So we are considering the impact of each and every element in the capital structure separately. 
there is an impact of equity, debt, everything will be considered separately. Now, then the step number, step, step number two will be, will consider the present value of tax benefits arise from debt. So step number two, and then, uh, we know that when we use debt, we will can get some tax savings. Okay, on the interest, we can save some tax. So we'll consider the present value of this tax savings in step number two. We'll discuss it in detail. When we are doing a question, we'll discuss that in detail. And step number three, we'll consider the issue cost. So whichever the fund that we use, whenever we raise fund, we'll have to bear an issue cost. So we'll include that as well. So once we calculate the impact of these three elements, we'll just combine it together to find the APV of the project. So what are the three steps of APV? Calculating NPV using KE and K, that is known as base case NPV. Then step number two is to calculate the tax benefit arising from the debt in the form of tax savings. And the final part is finding the issue cost. Then we'll clip it together to find the adjusted present value of the project. Is it clear everyone? So now the question is, how will you calculate KE and geared? So what are the two different ways in which we can calculate KE and geared? So we have got two different methods to calculate KE and geared. So it depends upon the information which is given in the question. So either we can calculate KE and geared with the CAPA formula itself. So what was your CAPM formula? KE is equal to RF plus beta E into R minus R. And if you remember, I have said that this systematic risk is indicated by the letter beta E. It includes both business risk and the impact of business risk and financial risk. But when you are calculating KE and geared, we don't need the impact of financial risk. So instead of using the equity beta, we'll use beta A. So the beta A indicates the business risk. So we are only considering the impact of business risk. So we assume that their company is a completely uh, equity funded company. So it's completely funded through equity. So KE and Gate will give you a figure of a cost of equity if the company is completely funded through equity. So there's one, there's the one way of calculating your KE and Gate that is directly apply beta A to CAPM formula. But unfortunately, it will be very rarely it get you will get that opportunity to calculate it like this because you have to score the marks now. So if that opportunity or that information is not available, then we have to use another method that is again using the miller or model. So here they have said that the cost of equity of a geared company, okay, the cost of equity of a geared company, it will be much larger than the cost of equity of an ungeared company because that's fair, right? We assume that the risk of the investors will be more if the company is geared. So obviously the cost of equity of a geared company will be higher compared to a cost of an ungeared company. So the Miller have come up with a formula that cost of an geared company will be equal to cost of ungeared company plus we have to pay something extra for the risk of debt. So it is KE ungeared minus cost of debt. So that premium should increase according to the proportion of debt over equity. So KEU minus KD into debt upon equity. As the proportion of debt over equity increases, that premium should, that extra amount we have to pay should increase. But we know that on the debt, we'll get the tax benefit as well. So into one minus three. So this is the Miller or model formula for calculating KE and geared. So in the question, they may give you the geared company's cost of equity and cost of debt will be given and they will give the data of debt and equity and tax. We just need to substitute this figure as, and as a balance figure, we need to find KE. So these are the two approaches we have to calculate KE and geared, either using CAPM formula or using M&M &M, &M with the tax formula. So this is the theory or this is the formula which is arised from Amanda with the tax concept. So Amanda with the tax say that 
the cost of equity of a geared company will be higher compared to an ungeared company we have to pay something extra that difference will depends upon the proportion of debt upon the equity and even we need to consider the tax impacts as well that's why we are multiplying with 1 minus g is it clear everyone so ningalku thannaikana information vechittu you can use any of this approach to find keu so that keu is needed to find the npv or the base case npv that's the first step of your apv calculation second step you'll have to consider the present value of tax benefits and whatever the impact of the debt will be considered in step number 2 and step number 3 will consider the issue cost of equity as well as debt is it clear everyone so we'll try to discuss I'm, I'm, i i don't think that i will get much time to calculate that questions i'll just try to discuss that two questions from the areas which you have discussed right now so first one will go with uh, tisa company you can just go through that question that's a perfect example for doing a question with respect to change in business risk Okay. Can you see the question, guys? Can you see this question? It's a pretty old question, but still, it's a perfect one to understand that concept. So, can you just quickly go through that question? Have a rough look at that question. Just go through it. So here, Tisa Company is considering an opportunity to produce innovative component, which fitted into motor vehicle engines. So will enable to utilize the fuel more efficiently. The component can be manufactured using either process omega or process theta. So these are the two offers we have. So we are assessing the two projects whether to use omega or theta. Okay. Also, this is entirely a new line of business for Tisa Company. So what does it that line indicate? It's a new line of business. So, is it a change in business risk? Is it indicate that there is a change in business risk? Is it so? Right. So that line itself clearly indicates that the Tisa company is planning to invest in something new. So there is a change in business risk. So what's the approach we have to take? We need to find a risk adjusted cost of capital. to consider the financial acceptability of that project isn't it fine so it is of the opinion that developing either process over the period of 4 years either of the process over the period of 4 years and selling productions right at the end of 4 years to under may prove lucrative so they have given the cash flows the net cash flows of pro both process omega and zeta but first of all we need a discount factor for it so the company have in the question it is given the details of Company's existing capital structure. This company currently have ten million fifty cents shares trading at one eighty cents each, and its loans current value is three point six million. And after tax cost of debt is already given. So as I mentioned already in the class, the cost of debt is given directly here. We just need to find the new cost of equity. So, but how will you find it? So they have given the information with respect to our. targeted industry so we have to find a business risk of the component that we are planning to invest so elfu manufactures electric parts of four car including the production component similar to one being considered by tisa company so here we have got a proxy company but the main question here is are they completely processing or focusing on our product no 
Elfo is a company who mainly focus on the car manufacturing components, electric parts for cars. But they it includes a production of the components similar to one being assessed by us. That is, it is similar to Zeta or Omega. So it's very difficult for us because they are we cannot just directly calculate it using their equity beta. We have to differentiate that amount. Separately, can do it. Can do it. Okay. So that will be a challenging part here because it's not an FM paper. We know that in FM it will be much challenging for you. So these similar adjustments have even come up in the recent exams. Okay. So L4 company's equity beta is 1.4. So we have got the overall equity beta of L4 company, which includes the business risk of both the company that we are actually planning to invest and their other business process as well. Okay. So it is estimated that the equivalent equity beta for its other activities, excluding the component, it is 1.25. And L4 has a equity of 400 million and debt of current value 96 million. It can be assumed that 80% of L4 company debt finance and 70% of equity finance are attributable to other activities. That is excluding the components. So, how you'll arrive at that business risk calculation? We need beta A anyway, right? We need the beta A or business risk of the component that we are actually planning to invest. So what's the step? What's your, what should be a strategy? This scenario. So they have given L4 companies overall beta E is given by using that equation, beta E into value of equity divided by value of equity plus debt into one minus T, you will get a beta A, but that beta A will be the overall beta A of the company, which includes both the business risk of other components and the process that we are, or the process or the component that we are planning to invest. Right. So apart from that, even the company have given the details of equity beta of other business. So they have given the equity beta of other business and even specifically it is mentioned in the question that what should be the proportion of equity and debt that is allocated for the other business. But directly in the Mukatana Dunda, look at the question here. They have given the capital structure that L4 company have allocated for other business companies. See? So using this clue, we can find that information of business risk. Using that data, we can even find the business risk of other business. So once you get the business risk of other business, next step in the arigana, we know the overall beta A. We know the overall beta A. And now we know the beta A of other business. So how you are going to calculate the beta A of our process or the component that we are planning to invest? How many are you doing? How will you do that? Can I just deduct the business risk of other business from overall beta A to find the business risk of our process component? No, we should not do that. We know we know the company is not doing this two business separately. The overall weighted average value is what we have received here. So our overall business risk of our L4 company it includes an average value. So if you look at the question, they have mentioned that Matam shares share on other other business roller, other business in a share at Rana. 75% of the equity finance. I mean, 75% of our business is concentrated in other components in the barana. Other activities apart from the component production for Ilfu company. So I can assume that the total overall beta, whatever the amount that you are going to get, it's an average value of these two business risk. That is 75% into business risk of other activity plus 
25 percentage of business risk of the component that we are planning to invest. So, if you have a chair, you can get the overall business risk. So, this is the equation that we have to use to find the value of this beta A. Is it clear, everyone? But normally, students stay in the mistake and they will find the overall beta and they will find the beta A of our other activity and they will just net it off. I'm going to say, I'm going to talk. Is it clear, everyone? So this similar technique or similar case studies have even repeated in the recent papers. Okay. So a same type of technique in UCM. So always remember how to tackle this type of questions. So first of all, we'll calculate the overall beta E. So how we are going to calculate the overall beta E? How we are going to calculate the overall beta E? Uh, how will you calculate the overall beta E, guys? Using the formula beta A, we need to find the beta A of overall L4 companies. So what are the data we need? We need the data of equity beta. How much is it is how much it is equity beta? Equity beta Trana. Can I reply in the chat? 1.4. 1.4. Hindu, we need the value of equity and debt of overall L4 company. So, what is the value of equity? They have 400 million shares, each one worth 120 cents. So, 400 million into 120 cents or 1.2 dollars. And the current value of debt is already given, it is 96 million. So we need these figures and the tax rate is how much? 25%. So we know the formula for calculating asset beta. So what was the formula? Equity beta into value of equity divided by value of equity plus debt into 1 minus T. So let's do that. So we are going to do it. 1.4 is equity beta. We know 1.4 is equity beta. So 1.4 into value of equity. How will you calculate value of equity? We know that it was 400 million. So 400 into 120 cents. So it should be 1.2. So that amount divided by the same component. plus value of equity plus value of debt. How much was value of debt? 96 million into 1 minus T. We know the tax is 25 percentage. So 1 minus T, it will become 75 percentage. Okay. So if you take out that proportion, you will get the value of asset beta. So how much is the asset beta here? 1.2. 2 or 1.217. So all of you understood how to get the beta A or asset beta of Alpha company. Is it clear everyone? How we have calculated the asset beta? Fine. The next one we need to calculate the asset beta of other business activities of Alpha company. So how will you find it? They have given us the equity beta of other business activity, right? How much is the equity beta of other business activity? This 1.25. And it is mentioned that the capital structure allocation will be 75 percentage equity will be allocated to other activity and 80 percent debt finance is given to other activities. So we need that assumption as well. So it will be 1.25, right? Equity beta value was 1.25 into 400 multiplied by 1.2, but only 75 percentage will be available for other business activity, right? The whole amount divided by
plus 96 million into how much was the proportion of debt allocated to other activity? That's right now. How much was the debt allocated to other activity? Is it 80 percentage or 85 percentage? How much it is? 80 percentage. 80 percentage. So it should be 80 percentage into 1 minus t that is 75 percentage. The tax rate was 25. So just do that calculation. We'll do the calculation separately. So for 400 into 1.2 multiplied by 75 percentage. So it should be 360 plus 96 into 80 percentage multiplied by 75 percentage. So this is VE divided by VE plus VD into 1 minus T multiplied by 1.5. How much is the equity beta? How much is the asset beta now? It's 1.07 or 1.08. So we got the value of business risk of the overall business as well as for the other business activity. So we know the overall business risk of L4 company, it's a weighted average of two business ideas or two business risks. So how will you calculate this? How you are going to calculate that balance because it will be 1.27. We know that the overall business risk is 1.27. So how you will get it? It will be 1.08 that the business risk of other activity into 75 percentage plus the business risk of the targeted component we have into 25 percentage. So this weightage will actually will give you the overall business risk. So now substitute the formula, how will it, how it will come? So 1.27 minus, how much it is 1.08 into 75 percentage? Take it out. So it will be 1.08 into 75 percentage divided by 25 percent that will give you the business risk of the other component that we are planning to invest okay so just substitute that formula 1.27 minus so just do it in the excel so it will be 1.27 minus 1.08 into 75 percentage. What are the amount that you get? The amount divided by 25 percentage. So, how much is the overall business risk? Was 1.27. From that, now we have got the business risk of the process that we are investing. How much it is? 1.84. Is it clear everyone? I'm 1.84 I'm going to get in a month's live. Can you reply in the chat? All of you is it clear? So now this 1.84 will be used to calculate the new equity beta. 
So now using the concept of CAPM, now I'm going to calculate the new KE. So how will you calculate the new KE? They have given the current base rate and the market premium will, is given. So what is this base rate? That, date, that base rate will be considered as your risk-free rate and the market risk premium that is RM minus RF, it is 5.8 percentage, right? So now I'm going to substitute this values to the equation of CAPM, which is RF plus beta E into RM minus RF. So here RF is how much? 3.5 percentage. So just do it. So it will be 3.5 percentage plus 1.84 into the premium is how much? 5.8 percentage. So we will get the value as how much? The CAPM. The risk adjusted K is how much? 14.7. And we know the cost of debt as well. So how much is your cost of debt? The after tax cost of debt is given directly in the question, which was 4.5, because otherwise we'll lose the time there. So 4.5 percentage. How are you then going to calculate the back? How will you calculate the back now? Hmm? How will you calculate the back, guys? We need the weightage. Right, we need the weightage. So, in order to calculate the VAC, we need the proportion of the weightage. So, for that, we need the value of equity and value of debt. So how much is the value of equity of Tesla company's current capital structure? It will be 10 million shares each trading at 180 cents. So, how, will, how much will it will be? 10 million into 1.8. So, it will be 18 million. So if you are converting it into millions, it will be 18 million. And the current value of loan note is given directly, which is 3.6 million. So now we can use this to calculate the proportion of equity as well as the proportion of debt. So how will you calculate it? So we calculate it, guys. So VAC will be the proportion the weightage. So it will be eighteen divided by eighteen plus. 3.6 18 million divided by 18 plus it is 83 83.3 percentage is your proportion of equity so how much it will be the proportion of debt just the balance sheet bigger, so it will be 16.67. So we know the weightage. So if you know the weightage, how you are going to calculate the back? The back will be the cost into weightage, right? It's 14.7 into 83.3. The same way it should be for debt, it is 4.5 multiplied by 16.7. So what will be the overall back? The new risk adjusted VAC will be how much? 13 percentage. Is it clear, everyone? So we have to use this risk adjusted VAC to find the NPV of our project. Perfect. So the question was provide a recent estimate of cost of capital that is our company used to calculate the NPV of the two process. So which one we should use? That should be 13 percentage, including our relevant calculation. We have explained it. So we need to explain it as well why we are using a risk adjusted VAC along with the calculation. Is it clear, everyone? So in the question, they have already given the NPV, the value of MIRR, everything is given here for you. So you just need to find it for process omega. 
for the CETA, they have given the following data. So that is NPV, IRRs, everything is given. We just need the cash flows and these cash flows will be used to calculate the NPV of process omega. So let's calculate the NPV of process omega for the cash flows. In year zero, it will be how much? Just 3,800. Then one two two zero. So just use these figures. So these are the cash flows we have. So since they have already given the net cash flows, we can easily find the NPV. So how will you calculate the NPV? The discounting rate is given here. So is equal to NPV, select the rate, comma, find the present value of cash flows from year one to four, and net it off with the initial investment. So what's the NPV of the project? It is 1.551. And if you are comparing with the NPV of process zeta, is it higher or lower? What do you think? The risk is high or low? So the return is lower, right? Now calculate the other factors. We need IRR and MIRR. So how will you calculate IRR? So since we have Excel, it's more easier for now. So how will you calculate IRR? It will be easy equal to IRR. Select the cash flows from year zero to last year. Year zero to last year. So how much it is? 27 percentage will be your IRR. And finally, the MIRR calculation. Even that, we can do it in Excel. So how will you do it? Is equal to MIRR. Then select the cash flows. Then we have to show the finance rate. How much was the finance rate? Finance rate was 13 percentage. Again, we have to show the reinvesting rate as well. Okay, so it is almost the same way in which we do the IRR calculation. The only difference is after considering the cash flows from year zero to last year, we have to enter the refinancing reinvesting rate and our financing rate. And in MIRR, we assume that unlike IRR, the cash flows are getting reinvested at the cost of capital. So that's why we are using uh, the cost of capital as your finance rate as well as reinvesting rate. So how much is the MIRR? It is 23 percentage. IRR is 27 percentage. So compared to process zeta, in IRR, we have got a better value. And for the rest of the figures, I think the process data will be much better. But we cannot make a final conclusion as such on the base of the financial figures. We have to consider the risk factors as well. So return code learning, we have to say that process data will have a higher risk as. So we need to discuss that element with the investors. So is it clear everyone? So apart from the foreign NBV, we discussed about how to do a normal NBV and especially when there is a change in business risk and we run the concepts with respect to IRR and MIRR as well. Okay, and Okla? Fine. So we have to do one other question of APV, but we'll do it in the next class. Okay, now I'm going APV and Okla. So, but again, as I already mentioned, you can just do this question, Talam company as a homework. Then APV, are there a base? We can just do this question. Tire, no question. 
പിന്നെ ഹയർ ലെവലുള്ള ക്വസ്റ്റ്യൻ ആണ് നിങ്ങൾക്ക് മനസ്സിലാക്കണമെങ്കിൽ യു ക്യാൻ ഡൂ ദിസ് ക്വസ്റ്റ്യൻ ടിപ്പ് ടു ടീം ഓക്കെ അപ്പോൾ ഒരു ബേസ് ലെവൽ ആദ്യം ആ ബേസിക് കൺസെപ്റ്റ് മനസ്സിലാക്കാൻ ഐ ഫീൽ ലൈക്ക് ഇറ്റ്സ് ബെറ്റർ ടു ഡു സ്ട്രൈയർ സ്ട്രൈയർ എന്ന് പറഞ്ഞ ക്വസ്റ്റ്യൻ ഉണ്ട് അത് ചെയ്യുക ഇറ്റ്സ് എ പ്രീ ഓൾ ക്വസ്റ്റ്യൻ ബട്ട് ഇറ്റ്സ് കവറിംഗ് ദ ബേസിക് കൺസെപ്റ്റ് അതിനൊരു ഹയർ ക്വസ്റ്റ്യൻ ആയിട്ടൊരു ട്രിപ്ലിറ്റീൻ പോലത്തെ ക്വസ്റ്റ്യനിലോട്ട് പോകാം കേട്ടോ എനിവേ വിൽ ഡിസ്കസ് വൺ എ പി വി ക്വസ്റ്റ്യൻ ഇൻ ദ നെക്സ്റ്റ് ക്ലാസ് അപ്പൊ അതോടുകൂടി ആ ഇൻവെസ്റ്റ്മെന്റ് പ്രൈസിൽ ഓൾമോസ്റ്റ് ചോദിക്കാൻ സാധ്യതയുള്ള എല്ലാ ടൈപ്പ് ഓഫ് കാൽക്കുലേഷൻസ് ഓർ ഏരിയാസ് നമ്മൾ ഡിസ്കസ് ചെയ്യും fine so try to do that question talam company i will ask uh, as you have done today and you can try here talam company homework it so i will be giving a recording as well of the same okay guys so that's it for today we will start the apv and start the apv guide and we even will discuss about risk management as well so next two days we will be focusing on risk management സ്ട്രെയർ എനിക്ക് തോന്നുന്നു ബി പി പി അല്ലെങ്കിൽ കപ്പ് പ്ലാനിൽ കാണും ഇറ്റ്സ് എ പഴയ ക്വസ്റ്റ്യൻ ആണ് ഐ തിങ്ക് ടു തൗസൻഡ് എയ്റ്റ് പഴയ മേ ബി ബിഫോർ ടു തൗസൻഡ് ടെൻ എന്തോ ഉള്ള ക്വസ്റ്റ്യൻ ആണ് കൺസെപ്റ്റ് ജസ്റ്റ് മനസ്സിലാക്കാൻ വേണ്ടി യൂസ് ചെയ്യാം അത്ര ഈസി ക്വസ്റ്റ്യൻ ഒന്നും ഇൻ റിയാലിറ്റി കേസിൽ എക്സ്പെക്ട് ചെയ്യേണ്ട ബാക്കി നാളെ ഡിസ്കസ് ചെയ്യാം താങ്ക് യു സാർ ഓക്കെ